An incredibly busy day for DJI fans. Not only have they given us this thing right here, the brand new DJI Neo with a brand new controller, the DJI RCN3, but there has also been firmware updates for the DJI Mini 4 Pro, the DJI RCN2 controller, the DJI RC2 controller, and we have a new version of the DJI Fly app 1.14.0. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the new features I have noticed on the DJI Fly app and talk about what the firmware updates are all about on the controllers, go for a test flight with the DJI MIDI 4 Pro just to make sure it's all doing exactly as it should. And I've also tested the good old DJI Mini 2 just to see if there is anything out there for those of you that are still using that drone. So let's get into it. So first of all then, we have got a new version of the DJI Fly app. This is 1.14.0. And of course, every time DJI launch a new drone, such as this piece of kit right here, they have to update the DJI Fly app to be able to enable it to work. Not only have we got this new DJI Neo, but we also have a new controller as well. This is the DJI RCN3 controller. And you may be forgiven for thinking you have seen this style of controller before. In fact, yes, it looks exactly the same as the original DJI RCN1 controller and of course the DJI RCN2. So first of all, I want to dive into the DJI Fly app purely because obviously that's the thing most of you are going to see as something new. When you first turn it on, it has changed slightly. What you're now going to see is first of all, a beginner's guide for the new DJI Neo on the right hand side. But what you're also going to see on the left hand side, well, so the left of the center, I guess, is you're going to see, okay, the fact that now the DJI Fly app showcases your work on the home screen. That's pretty cool, I guess, if you are massively into photography and you're pretty good at it, you might want people to be able to see exactly what it is. Um, so you can go ahead and submit it. Looking through the DJI Fly app, apart from the front face, nothing seems to have changed that much. For me, I think some of the icon placements have slightly adjusted. On the left-hand side, it seems the uh, takeoff button seems a little bit higher to me. And scrolling through some of the menus, whether it's just me or not, I do not know, but some of the fonts look a little bit different as well, but nothing hugely major, but something for you to be aware of. Now, if you are flying the DJI Air 3 or the Mini 4 Pro, there has been a full firmware update. So when we are looking at our settings, often when you actually update the firmware for your drone, it can restore some of your settings back to factory. So please do check distances, return to home, camera settings, just to make sure they're exactly how you want them to be. And uh, just be aware that they may change after a firmware update. Now, one thing I have noticed, which is a little bit confusing to me, is the fact that the transmission tab now looks incredibly different. Obviously at the top, we've still got our ability to live stream and we've also still got our graph showing the interference. But what's interesting here is it says channel selection as auto. Now, if we scroll down slightly further, what you can see is the drone now gives us a little visual indication in terms of a sliding scale anyway, as to how much interference it's actually getting. As you can see, we've got 10 and 20. Similarly, you know, when it comes to this, the lower number is the better number. This isn't signal strength. This graphic right here is the signal of interference. So basically it's letting you know how much interference the drone is receiving. The higher the bars, that isn't signal strength, that's interference. So you want these bars to be as low as possible. And of course, as expected in a built up area, if I flip between 2.4 and 5.8, 2.4, you get a lot of interference, 5.8, you get less. And you can see that is reflected on the DJI Fly app. You can even see that when we're on 2.4, it shows us 20 down at the bottom. Whereas if we switch it over to 5.8, it goes down to 10 telling us it's better for flying in this area. Now, one thing that I think is incredibly interesting is the fact it says channel selection is auto. Does this mean that at some point in the future, DJI is going to allow us to manually select the channel? Because obviously there's two different factors. You have got the frequency, which is your 2.4, 5.2, or 5.8. Then you've got the channel, which is the channels within that frequency. Now, 
on the good old fashioned DJI Mavic Mini or Mini SE, you could select the bar manually to select what channel you want. Basically meaning that once you took off, it was locked in place. Uh, it was good in some circumstances, but also bad because if you did fly along and you got a lot of interference in that area on that particular channel, you was locked in, you were stuck, you would get a return to home situation. Whereas of course with the OcuSync technology, OcuSync 2, 3 and 4, it takes care of the channel hopping for you, but it does allow you to fix the frequency. And I just wonder whether this is deliberate language telling us that obviously it's automatic. Will there be a manual channel selection added in the future? We will wait and see. There has been a firmware update for the DJI Mini 4 Pro. If we take a look at exactly what that is, it is to allow compatibility with the DJI RCN3 controller, which is the brand new controller, which comes with this DJI Neo right here. So what I want to do is just go for a flight with the DJI Mini 4 Pro just to make sure everything is working exactly as it should and let me tell you we are right up to the limits of what this DJI Mini 4 Pro can actually handle. We are gusting around 35 to 40 miles per hour, not really comfortable putting the drone up in these situations but of course we'll keep a good eye on it, we've got visual line of sight of the drone, we can monitor what it's doing in the air. But before we start and we're still on the ground there is something that I've noticed which is quite odd before we have actually picked up enough satellites to lock in the home point for some reason the distance is showing quite an incredible number that would most certainly be outside a visual line of sight thankfully that is just an anomaly and when the satellites uh, go white and where home point is being updated as you can see it returns to exactly what it should be so starting a flight out then with the mini 4 pro uh, just to make sure everything is working like i've mentioned um Honestly, this drone is getting absolutely battered by the wind uh, right up the limits, as I mentioned, to what this drone can actually cope with, uh, but it's doing absolutely fine. So first of all, we're just going to get a little bit of stock footage just so I can compare it uh, to the DJI Neo for a bit of a comparison that I will do in a later video. What we're going to do is just test to make sure that everything is working. One of the tests I always like to do when I'm flying my drones is to just make sure the quick shots are working purely because what it simply does is it make sure that when we are selecting quick shots it is identifying targets okay and it locks onto a, a subject absolutely fine for those of you that wonder why i do this test it's because in the past uh, there was issues with the dji fly app where no matter what you did when you drew it on screen it would not select anything so this has become a staple test as part of my dji fly app update videos and as you can see selecting that target it's performed it absolutely fine now we've taken a few shots we have you know tested Tested point of interest, tested spotlight, done quite a bit of flying around, up, down, left, right, okay, but as you can see the wind is getting a little bit too much, so what I'm going to do is just literally finish the flight with the DJI Mini 4 Pro, just to make sure it can return to home, and that's pretty accurate, so let's hit that return to home button, okay, as you can see the drone is just going to spin round and head all the way back to us, and it's done a pretty good job, even in this wind it has not been blown off course and I think that's a pretty successful test with the Mini 4 Pro. It has to be said looking through the menus apart from the slightly revised font and of course that new transmission tab there has been no particular differences or new features that I can see on the Mini 4 Pro apart from the compatibility with the DJI RC N3 controller. Now of course loyal to you older fans uh, that have been with the channel a while or still are running the DJI Mini 2 really really apprehensive about putting this drone up in the air purely because the DJI Mini 4 Pro has only just coped, so this might be a bit of a, a struggle, but let's just see how we get on. So let's just take off with that Mini 2 then, and really, straight away, this drone is getting blown off course. It's not great, but as I've already mentioned, we're keeping our eye on it, okay? And if anything gets a little bit hairy, we'll just make sure that we bring it back. Of course, at times like this, it is a good idea to have some sort of cover, um, such as flyaway insurance. I am affiliated with the drone insurance company Cover Drone that offer really really good service many of you have used cover drone in the past successfully for claims and of course they do cover flyaways so if you do find yourself in difficulty it's just nice to know that you do have that backup on average a policy with cover drone works out at around 10 percent of your equipment's value to insure it for the year and of course you can spread that monthly to manage the payments and if you want to get a quote i will leave a link in the video description uh, so you can go get a price but ultimately like i said well let's just quickly uh, crack on with a 
simple quick shot on this DJI Mini 2 then because it really is getting blown around. Okay, as you can see, we're really struggling to make any sort of headway when flying forward. What I'm going to do now is we don't want to be in the air too long. The whole drone seems to be working absolutely as it should. Let's just hit that return to home. Okay, which is generally quite good, except for the fact that for some reason, obviously when it comes to slow down uh, and just adjust its position for landing, it is absolutely miles out. Okay, so what we're going to do is just hit manual control and land that drone. So obviously I do have this new toy to play with, but I wanted to remain loyal to those of you that watch my videos for the DJI Fly app updates, just to tell you all about the new update, if there is anything to look out for, and just check whether the DJI Mini 4 Pro and the Mini 2 are working as they should. Don't quite have the DJI Mini 3 Pro with me at the moment, so I'm un unable to check that. Interesting version of the DJI Fly app right now, showcasing people's work, and of course, you know, a big part of it is taken up by the beginner's guide for the DJI Neo, and you're gonna have to see that whether you've got the Neo or not, okay? But of course, once you connect your drone, it's going to go away and you're going to see the standard screen. Now, one thing I have to mention, and I will make a separate video on this just to make you aware, if you are thinking about getting this DJI Neo and you already have a DJI Mini 4 Pro or the DJI Air 3 with the RC N2 controller or RC2, please be aware that there was firmware updates for both of these controllers and they will work with the DJI Neo. Especially with this Neo, to get the most out of it, it does need to be used with the controller, okay? But if you do already have one of those controllers, you don't need to buy the Fly More Combo and get the controller. It will work with those two options, which is absolutely fantastic, okay? So that covers this update video for, of course, DJI Fly App 1.14.0, the new firmware update on the controllers, uh, which seems to be working absolutely fine fine screen recordings settings everything really is working fine the only thing i did notice with the dji rc n2 controller when i was flying the mini 4 pro my compass seemed to be well off for the direction of uh, its position compared to the drone weirdly that was a bit of an anomaly as well because when i plugged the same phone into the DJI RC N1 controller with the Mini 2, it was absolutely fine. So just keep an eye on that. So that wraps up my review of the DJI Mini 4 Pro firmware update, the new Fly app, and the two updates for the RC2 and the RC N2 controllers as well. If you did find good value in this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. It really does help the channel. And most importantly, if you do want to see more videos and my review on the DJI Neo that will be coming shortly, then please do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified when I post that review. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.